Hi, my name is Eddie. I'm super excited to share developer stories with you in this new YouTube series. Today with me, I have Lucy, who has got so many exciting stories to share with you. I can't wait. Lucy is all the way over in Colombia, and I'm kind of giving away part of her story already. So maybe enough for me. Um, Lucy, thank you so much for geeking out with me on Twitter. It's been an absolute pleasure, and it's awesome to finally you know, chat with you like in real life ish as best we can across the globe but please introduce yourself and uh, tell us a bit more about yourself yeah so i'm lucy i'm from london but as eddie was saying i'm living in cali colombia and i've been living here for over two years now and i've been teaching myself how to code since the pandemic and yeah that's basically me and you're also sharing a journey on social which i think is awesome because you're kind of building up a personal brand there and you get to connect with so many cool people so thank you so much for doing that and what are you working on at the moment so at the moment i'm working on my first paid freelance project um, i'm helping out the senior developer of my friend's company to build up the front end of a real estate website and i'm building that in next.js and react which were both two technologies that i don't know so well right now so i'm kind of learning on the job but it's a really, really great uh, experience for me to finally learn some frameworks that I hadn't seen, but in a real setting. I love that because people, I think, worry they need to know everything before they get a role. And I think a lot of the time it's not about the certain and the syntax that we know. There is more to it. I mean, we're not coding 100 percent of the time. Like you said, you know, you're helping someone, so you're collaborating with someone. And so that is yeah, really inspiring uh, to so many people. So thank you so much for, for sharing. I'm glad to hear it's going well. So that's what you're doing at the moment. Let's rewind. What were you doing before you got into tech? I've always been a bit of a maths geek. Like maths was always my favorite thing at school. I studied maths at university. And as soon as I finished university, I went straight into my first job. I worked there for three years. I was working in, in an insurance software company as a business analyst, and I was building websites for insurance companies and brokers, but more like uh, writing the code of the company rather than a code that you could reuse somewhere else. I was working like alongside developers, kind of raising tickets if we needed new technologies. But I quit my job in 2019 because my friend had a wedding in Mexico and I always wanted to travel to Latin America. So I thought, well, this is my time. It's time to like change what I'm doing and just take the leap and go. And I was super scared because it was my first time traveling anywhere on my own, like by myself. Since then um, I was traveling and then I ended up settling in Colombia. That's awesome. And what attracted you into tech? I think with tech, it was, uh, as I was traveling, I was seeing so many people working online and traveling. And I've always loved traveling. So for me, it was so interesting to see these people that were doing a different style of traveling, like long travel with um, like working and earning money online. And it kind of inspired me to want to do something similar. So I was trying to find things to do. At one point I was considering like photography, video editing, I don't know what. And I spoke to two good friends who are developers, shout out to Sophie and Peter. And they um, spoke to me and they, they told me about coding. They, they heard about my background and they were like, why, why haven't you considered coding? It seems perfect for exactly what you're looking for. So it was in my mind. And then when the quarantine hit in Colombia, I thought, well, I've got loads of free time. I might as well start like studying. And I started with CS50, the free course from Harvard for introduction to computer science. And as soon as I started from the first class, I was like, why have I not been doing this for longer? Because it was exactly like the skills that I love, the problem solving, like it's really like geeky, but in a good way. And just, I was like completely fell in love from that point of, with, with programming and coding. Oh, I love that. And so what were some of the challenges that you faced um, getting into tech and how did you overcome them? I'm going to actually give an example of a challenge that I had, but I did not overcome. I actually gave up. Was um, when I when I started, I was doing the responsive web design certification back in 2020 from Free Code Camp, and I finally got to the the challenges section. You know, when you have to build a tribute page, you've got to build a form, actually like build things. And I was just I was having such a crisis because I couldn't. I really wanted it to be perfect. Like I didn't want to create something that was like that didn't look good and I didn't have the skills at that time to make something look good or I couldn't process in my mind how to organize things on the page and my boyfriend is much better at things like that and he's just doing all of the challenges easily and I couldn't do it and I just thought I'm just not gonna do it <laughs> so that's an example of something where I thought 
I'm going to leave this now and I think it's a good thing to consider that sometimes there are certain things that aren't for you in that moment and it's completely okay to just put it to one side and move on to something else because rather than spending weeks or you know months on one thing that's not for you come back to it like I've actually considered maybe I should go back and do those again now because I think I could do it. <laughs> yeah I think it's great uh, great advice that um people can learn from your, your experience, right? There's no point getting bogged down in something, getting stuck on something, getting demotivated. It, we, there's so much in tech that we can just kind of pivot and, and go around. And, and I love that, it's a great example. So thank you so much for your honesty with that. So sticking with challenges, what are some of your current challenges that maybe the community can help you with? So right now I would say, but a big challenge for me is really trying to understand React. And I also now have to understand MongoDB. That's a new thing I need to learn over the weekend to start working with it next week. But also, I think one of my biggest challenges at the moment, I created my Twitter to sort of document my 100 days of code. Now that's finished and I'm trying to like decide what's my place in tech? Like, where do I sit and what do I want? What can I do to help people? Like, how can I use the skills that I have? to actually kind of make a difference and help others. So I think that's also something that I'm dealing with at the moment to sort of work out what direction I want to go in tech. In my opinion, you don't need to ever answer that, I think, <laughs> because it can always change. You know, what I did 15 years ago is different to what I did yeah. 10 years ago, is different to what I did five years ago, and it's different again now. So, but from what I'm hearing, I think you'd make an awesome DevRel. I think you'd be great. You know, you like the tech side, you like sharing the knowledge side, and I mm -hmm. think that'd be just so cool. Um, <laughs> so that'd be really, really good. What sort of resources do you use to improve yourself in, in tech and learn new skills? If ever I have a problem, like when I, for example, right now when I'm working on this project where I have limited knowledge on the technologies that I'm using. Always on Stack Overflow, like most people, always Googling like different things to try and find the answer to my specific error or problem that I'm having. But something that I also really like to do that I don't see people talking as much about is that, for example, now I'm working with material UI components. And often in the documentation, the examples that they give are really specific and standalone examples. They just work on their own. When you try to integrate that into a project, it's quite difficult. So I go into GitHub, I search for the, the names of the, the components, I, I put different search commands to kind of find real examples of people who have like put stuff in their repositories, like using that particular component in a much more complex like uh, website or you know something where it's not all in one file. And then I look at those examples to try and help me to understand how things work in the bigger picture. And that's what I need at the moment because I have so many gaps in my, in my React knowledge at the moment that sometimes that really does get in the way of my understanding. For other people, they could just read through the example and be like, okay, I see exactly how it's working. But for me, I need a few more examples to, to kind of understand how everything fits together. But it's awesome, you know, kind of how to find a solution to how to do it. Um, and I think that's that's great. And using GitHub and, and real life code, I think it's a great example. I am wearing my Stack Overflow t-shirt today, but I do <laughs> highly recommend using GitHub and more up to date. I guess my concern with Stack Overflow is not all the content on there is up to date. So I find people use things that are yes a few versions out of date and it kind mm -hmm. of works but kind of doesn't or things are already deprecated so they're building a new project with deprecated um, yeah. kind of functions and methods and so forth. Where do you find support in tech, be it technical or encouragement or motivation? Where, where do you go for that? Where would you recommend people get that support if they need it? The first one I can't recommend because it's my boyfriend. <laughs> I can't, maybe they don't have <laughs> access to my partner, but um, my, my boyfriend also does coding and for him, he's like my number one support always. If I have a problem, he's awesome. like he's like my rubber duck, you know, like, the, you know, they talk about the, the rubber duck yeah. thing. If you have a problem in coding, you need to explain it to someone. And apart from my partner, I think mainly like I'm so amazed at how helpful people are on Twitter. And like I've had a lot of problems where particularly when I was documenting 100 days of code, because I think a lot of people are very kind of sort of looking at that hashtag to offer some help is that sometimes when I've had issues, you know, people have jumped to give support or even in DMs to helping me to solve the problem. Like, oh, send me the code. Like, you know, just, I can help you. And really going out of their way to uh, help you solve your problem. So I would recommend to anyone to get involved in Twitter and put your journey out there. And also to any sort of online communities like Eddie Hub, obviously I'm going to mention that. And another one that I've just started going to, which I really love is Virtual Coffee, which is a meetup on Zoom, like four times a week. Because for example, 
I had a problem where I was trying to get the balance of like, how do I study when I'm working? Like, how do I balance studying when I'm also doing a real life project, but I've got gaps in my knowledge? And I just asked that question because at the beginning of every meeting in the, in the breakout rooms, they ask, does anyone have a specific question? So you have access to developers to really ask for any problems you're having or, or concerns and just get a bit of like support. So I would really recommend that community as well. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's, uh, it's great to hear that there are so many uh, supportive communities out there. So who inspires you in tech? Obviously, your partner. <laughs> uh, yeah, so lots. There's so many people doing so many amazing things on Twitter. I love seeing what everyone's doing. But someone that I've recently met with that I find really inspiring is um, Rafael Hernandez. And he is the Global Language Translations Lead at Free Code Camp. He's just super, super passionate about really like uh, increasing the content in Spanish in, on Free Code Camp, inspiring that next generation of developers or providing enough free content in their own language to the next generation of kind of developers in Latin America because it's getting better now, but there's such a difference of content in English and content in Spanish. And I think it's really important that there is accessible kind of content for free for people in Latin America because they can't afford all these courses. It's just, you know, it might even just be 20 or $30, but that's a lot of money here. So it's kind of really important to be getting involved with that kind of stuff. And he's inspired me actually to start creating some content in Spanish. <laughs> but I am, it's on my very long to-do list and I need to find time to think how I can do that. But I would really like to get more involved to connect my Spanish with my coding because I really want to also try and help and provide like to bridge the gap a little bit between the English content and the Spanish content to kind of help people to find stuff in their own in their own language. That sounds awesome. Super excited to see <laughs> what content you create. Let's see. If it's in I've Spanish, it definitely support. <laughs> but yes, it's uh, it's um, it's, it's there. The contract's done. You're going to do it. I won't understand the Spanish, but I definitely support and looking forward to, to seeing that. So where would you like to be in the next few years? Where do you see yourself? So I've always wanted to be working in like a location independent way. Like I know I'm not living in my my own country. I'm still permanent, right? Like at the moment I'm in, in Cali, but I have an apartment contract. It's not like I can just go and move and run and, and travel around. So I would love to be kind of finding a way to work remotely in coding, whether it's for a company or freelance projects and traveling around with my partner. We would like to go to Europe in the next year together, but obviously depending with COVID and depending with different things. But I would also really like to get more involved, as I mentioned with the Spanish, is I want to get more involved with the Latin American community, the tech community, and trying to find a way to help. I haven't worked out what that is, but I would really like to do more with that because I'd like to also use my experience. I've been an English teacher to support myself while I was learning to code and kind of finding a way to connect all of that because I think there's a real like opportunity to make a difference and really help people that are in situations, you know, learning code, learning to code would really change their lives because it gives you the access to earn from companies, not just in your own country. So I really like to get involved with that as well. That is awesome. I mean, you're already helping so many people on Twitter. You know, sharing your journey is inspiring other people. So I think that's that's amazing. I know you want to kind of scale that up and do more. So I'm super excited to see that. Anything I can do to help, let me know. What do you wish you knew when you started out? It's such a cliche answer that everyone says, but start a Twitter account from the first day. Like, literally, I wish that my 100 days of code that I did on Twitter were my first 100 days also to document what I was doing because even when I was reflecting on some of these questions about like my challenges it's like I can't remember things <laughs> starting a Twitter account when you first get started is just one of the best things that you could do because there's so many people available like to, to give you support and also I really find that if you do use that hashtag of 100 days of code as you start out like I said people are sort of looking at that hashtag to offer support so um, I think if you put yourself out there, it can feel a bit scary. Like my whole Twitter life is completely separate from my real life. I haven't shared with anyone really in my real life, my friends or, or my other social media. No one really knows that I have this little tech Twitter bubble, right? Because for me, I was kind of scared to put it out there with people that knew me personally. So I would recommend to start a new Twitter account, brand new. You don't even need to necessarily have it connected with your identity if you don't feel comfortable. 
but just put your journey out there and like really try to use Twitter for, for help because it's such a nice community and there really is a lot of support and a lot of amazing free kind of meetups or just so many things and people are so willing to help in DMs or you can even meet up with people on, on, Google, on Google Meets and it's just a really good resource because learning to code can be feel really, really lonely sometimes or you feel, I'm lucky I have my partner here, but if you're learning on your own, it, it can be very frustrating. So it's nice to have a platform where you can kind of share what you're, what you're dealing with. <laughs> That's so awesome. And now that we know that you're expert on video, then we're <laughs> looking forward to you starting your YouTube channel very soon as well. Maybe, maybe. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And you can vlog your adventures around Colombia, around Europe, so you can show people what is possible with, with tech and you know traveling the world at the same time while working on your laptop from the pool or the beach and so forth. <laughs> so, yes, looking forward to that. Everyone, leave a comment below and encourage Lucy to start a YouTube channel and to prioritize it up the list a put bit it, higher. Put it higher, not at the bottom. <laughs> what would you say to someone in the community who's currently stuck? And by stuck, it could be for tech or it could be feeling demotivated or they're struggling to get an internship or a job. What would your final tips and suggestions be to them? It's really important to realize that everyone's journey is really different. Something to be careful of is on Twitter, you see a lot of like, I got my first job in six months or whatever. Like, don't compare your journey to other people. Find a way to maybe support yourself doing something else while you're learning to code. So it takes that pressure off of, oh, I need to find a job, you know, like we're encoding so quickly. I think it's important to realize that if you are consistent and you just keep going every day a little bit, you will get to where you want to go. It's just, it can be really hard. It's really hard to sometimes get your first role, but if you're not able to get your first role and you're not having any luck, then find something else to contribute to, whether that's open source, volunteering, creating projects, just try different things and you will eventually find your place because there is room for everyone in tech. Like there's so many amazing stories of people that didn't even have a technical or like, you know, math background that have managed to get into tech. So you can as well, like for some people, it's gonna take longer. For my first paid project, I mean, I've been learning to code for nearly two years, like maybe a year and a half, a bit over a year and a half. And I'm only just getting paid now, right? And that's not a, that's nothing to be ashamed of because everyone's take takes their own time and just keep going and you will eventually get results. Because once you've got your first experience, or your first job, it's not even, like you're gonna be increasing like that, it's exponential. You're gonna really do really well in tech. So just keep going. I love that, great tips. <laughs> and uh, it's really important for everyone to hear each other's stories. So I love that. Lucy, thank you so much for taking the time to have this discussion with me and share your story with the awesome tech community. Hi, my name's Eddie and I'm super excited to do the developer series to do, to share. <laughs> Not a good start. So let's, uh, hang on a second. So we've got your current, uh, what's going? No, I'm sorry. We've got your. <laughs> can't even talk. 